Okay, three, two, one. Hello and good morning and welcome to another episode of the Cryptid Ramblers podcast. As always, I'm your co-host Callum and uh, thankfully, as always, is... uh, is your other co-host Scott? Hey, how we doing? Yeah, very good, man. How are you? Yeah, mate. Yeah, I'm really good. Good man. Yeah, I feel uh, refreshed and uh, bright on this <laughs> wonderful Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah, bright and early <laughs> yeah. on this uh, <laughs> Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, you, you, good week. Yeah, yeah, it's been all right. It's not been too bad. Um, done a few little repairs on on my motor. Yes, as, you have. As yeah. I told you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been to a few different bits and pieces. I went to a psychology talk uh, a presentation, did. which was really good yeah. over at the uh, the Palace Theatre in Southend. Yeah, it was like the, the mind of a murderer, wasn't it, or something? Or? Yeah, the psychology of a serial killer. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. It was great. It was brilliant. Um, it was. Uh, it did you feel like you were diagnosed when you when you sat there? And you oh thought, yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, I was I was diagnosing people as, as we were sitting there like, before it even yeah. started. He's a killer. <laughs> well, well, this is this is a thing, right? Um, as we was uh, all waiting to go into uh, in, into the actual theatre itself, mm. um, yeah. we're going up to the dress circle, so we're going to go up the stairs. Mm. You've been to the palace, yeah, haven't you? yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, there's a big old queue going up the stairs, and for some reason, this woman had decided to sit on the stairs, looking at her phone. Yeah, of course you would. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. You know, people going up and down. It's literally up and down. People pushing past her to. to she's get just up there. decided to. Yeah, and I was with with me better half Sam and yeah. my sister Lois, and um, I just t- I took one look at her, and I must have said this way too loud. She must have heard me <laughs> because I said, "How many psych- psychopaths do you reckon are going to be here tonight?" <laughs> and she looked up, <laughs> looked around, then got up and walked away. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, she must have heard that. She definitely heard you. Yeah. yeah, she definitely heard. <laughs> so um yeah it seems like i must have been diagnosing people before we even got in there <laughs> yeah i mean yeah especially in south end as well you know <laughs> probably even just walk into the theater you could walk past a few and be like yeah you've mate, got you've got a dead body in your uh, cupboard <laughs> mate uh, every time i go down the uh, the high street it gets weirder and weirder oh mate I, I haven't been to that high street for an unsightly amount of time like, like i can't even remember the last time i was down there but it's like something out of lost boys <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, People definitely. Are strange. Definitely, when yeah. You're a stranger. It's like The Walking Dead with The Lost Boys, I think. It's kind of that, that, that hybrid mix. <laughs> if you start at the top of the high street, it's more like The Walking Dead, and the closer Shaun you get the, to the seafront, or Shaun of the Shaun Dead. Of the dead <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. And then the closer you get to the, the seafront, it gets a bit more Lost Boys. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely, yeah. Like but pop, yeah. Uh, approaching the Alex down to Chinneries. <laughs> more flamboyant and more. Just more a biting. little bit more bitey, yeah. more bitey and more stabby. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah. yeah. How about yeah. you, mate? How was your week? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to, trying to think if I actually did anything. Um, yeah, I think just same shit, different different day, really. To yeah. be honest, yeah, work's still horrible, <laughs> boring. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's just yeah horrendous at the minute. Makes the days very long and slow. Yes, it does. It which does um, is the complete opposite of what I prefer. Because I actually prefer to be busy and actually being active and, you know, doing stuff. So, you know, your mind's ticking and you're not sitting there twiddling your thumbs in the, clock the day. watching. Yeah, well, exactly that. Exactly that. Um, clock watching. I was clock, clock watching. watching. I'll say that <laughs> well, if it gets any worse, I think I'll start the... <laughs> 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 I need something to do. Head down the seafront. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, under the piers, mate. That's yeah. it. Under the piers, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, pretty, um, pretty standard. I went to um, near us, as I'm sure you know, uh, or uh, close to where I live. There's um, like a drive-in movie. Oh, uh, I've heard thing. about it. Not <clears> and um, yeah, I went uh, a couple of months ago because um, they were showing the the new uh, Ghostbusters, um, of course, obviously, yeah. and then. Um, yeah, this week I won um, through Sky. I won uh, tickets to, to go again. Um, so again, it was free oh, to see um, Uncharted. No, nice. I hadn't seen it yet. 
Nice. So, um, yeah, did that last night. But, um, yeah, aside from that, it's just been work, running, and get, you know, going to the gym, same old routine, really. So, yeah, uh, yeah nothing Excellent. overly exciting. Well, but, uh, <clears throat> in light of this particular episode and mm. what is happening tomorrow morning, just so happens there's a full moon tomorrow morning. Oh, is it? And in particular, it's a lunar eclipse. So it's a blood moon. Oh, okay. T- tonight slash tomorrow morning. Tonight, yeah, yeah. What's what time? Because normally there's like a pivotal well, time, U- isn't there? What? UK time this is, yeah. guys. What would that... Do you know what that is? Or? I don't know. Don't know. I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to... Because I'll probably be up anyway. <laughs> if you hear a bit of howling. <laughs> if you hear howling, yeah. <laughs> it's only me, don't worry. <laughs> um, yeah, found, found my calling. <laughs> Literally yeah, found my... <laughs> you, you have it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that's quite a nice little... Um, sort of hint little breadcrumb as to what we're going to be uh, discussing today although by the time people hear this they would have uh, figured it out as always title of the episode <laughs> by the, the thumbnail, thumbnail. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah spoiler alert, yeah. Spoiler alert guys. <laughs> but um yeah as always before we get into uh, the actual episode we've got our uh, our shout outs that we uh, that we like to do and uh what better place to start than our uh, beloved patrons Indeed. um justin and, and james hello thank you um much love as always and um thank you for the uh continued support as always it is uh much appreciated thanks for sticking with it and uh hopefully you're still enjoying it yeah <laughs> can only assume you are so <laughs> i'll take that as a good sign <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, remember, guys, if uh, if you two want to come and uh, support your favourite cryptid podcast, then uh, then please do, um, and you can do that by heading to patreon.com forward slash cryptid ramblers podcast. Um, it's easy as that, and we've got um, two tiers to pick from, uh, priced at uh, four and six pounds respectively, plus VAT, plus VAT, um, which is I think is quite reasonable. Um, You'll get access, uh, early access, sorry, to the bi-weekly um, episodes, um, a personal shout out, as you've just heard. And uh, if you're part of the uh, top tier, then you will also get to uh, watch the video recording of, uh, of each podcast. Um, so hopefully enough, uh, enough reasons there <laughs> uh, to, yeah, to come, uh, to come along. <clears throat> um, now, as we're both now beautifully we are beautiful modeling, modeling as the, uh, you guys the Patreons will, will see. Um, we have got our um, relatively new uh, merch that we uh, launched with the guys at uh, buythatmerch.co.uk. Um, and we are blessed enough to have our uh, our own sort of page on the on the site with yeah, our indeed. season one merch. Mm. Um, I'm wearing the uh, shaved monkey design, we which got, was uh, a personal favourite. We've got a shaved monkey. We've got a shaved monkey. <laughs> and we've got a raging gorgon. <laughs> And that we have. We've got a raging gorgon and shaved monkey. Where do you find that on a Sunday morning, eh? It's only in South uh, Only in South <laughs> <laughs> Under the piers, you said, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Um, yeah, so, yeah, head along to buythatmerch.co.uk um, and either go to the podcast section um, along the top and um, search for us. And I think we're still at the top by alphabetical order which is handy um or you can go to buy that merch.co.uk forward slash cryptid ramblers and it will take you straight to uh the page we've got a varying designs and t-shirt styles hoodies jumpers and and whatever so hopefully there's something there that will um that will take your fancy uh, tickle your fancy absolutely yeah um and uh yeah i think that's it for the uh I haven't forgotten anything, have I? No. You got anything you need to want to add, or um, yeah, only only something a little bit interesting. Um, oh, as yes. I mentioned, yeah, I yeah, went yeah. to uh, went to that uh, psychology of serial killers talk. You did, and uh, again, following on from <coughs> the last two episodes. Yes, <laughs> and I, I, this is going to be the last one that I'll bring up for a little while, at the very least. But, right. Okay. Um, I found another vampire story that came from the serial killer talk oh uh, that's interesting i mean to be honest i mean the, the talk was really interesting anyway yeah. you know given uh, there's not you got the idea of like the old like murder porn sort of thing you know right. all the details yeah. the gory details that would we were all left out and it was just about the psychology of it all right okay but i found some gory details of course you did <laughs> yeah so um thank you so, internet yeah, so <laughs> well, i'm gonna try and be as uh as calm 
and PC <laughs> about it as I possibly can. <laughs> right. Um, okay. But yeah, just uh, I'm not going to go down like the, all the details too much. But oh, I just okay. found this. So well, I'm guessing this actually happened. So I guess we've got some sort of oh, absolutely, yeah. Respect to the actual victims to kind of exactly. show so as well. I, I guess so. I haven't really named. I mean, it, it happened at the turn of the century, really. You know. Uh, oh right. Um, okay. Going into the 20th century. So right. This is uh, the Vampire of Dusseldorf. Or right, yep. The Dusseldorf monster. Yeah. Right. And it's uh, the guy, Peter Curtin, he um, was born in on the 26th of May, 1883, and was executed on the 2nd wow. of July, 1931. Now, wow. Peter Curtin, had a, a, he had a checkered past, um, really. I mean, he committed a, a series of murders and sexual assaults between February and November in 1929 right. in the city of Dusseldorf. He moved around a fair bit as well, but this is where his his claim to fame really came in, was in Dusseldorf. Right. So in the years before these murders and assaults and, and such, Curtin was a, he was amassed, he amassed this, this huge criminal record involving arson and... Um, right. and, and, and an attempted murder, theft, and all Lovely. bits and pieces like that. Now, so it was a, it was a good egg then, all round. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> right from an early age. I mean, he had a really, his his childhood sounded yeah. it was just awful. Like his I was one of them, dad was, was a, right. a drunk and a very um, awful. Right, okay. And, and his mum wasn't much better. Um, I do. Yeah, there was uh, five kids in the household, and they were uh, made to be present at all times. Wow. Put it that way. <clears throat> okay. So later yeah. on in, in his life, he was uh, by the people that chronicled his um, his life. He was yeah. described as the king of sexual perverts. Right. It's quite a title, really. It <laughs> is quite a title, yeah. Um, and he was found guilty of nine counts of murder and seven counts of attempted murder for which he was sentenced to death by beheading in April um, 1931. He was executed wow. in July. In July. 48. Right. Now so beheading, so would that have been back, I mean, back then that would have been the old uh, guillotine, wouldn't it? It was, yeah. Germany was still using the, yeah. the guillotine in the 1930s. Nice. So it was a public execution then, I suppose. Was no, it? it wasn't public. Oh, it wasn't? No, right. it wasn't public. Okay. It was um, within the walls of the, of the prison. Right. Um, but he, Curtin himself, he's, he's actually classed as, what's called a graduation killer. So what that means is he started off at a young age um, with animals. Um, oh, and then... And the, what got him into it was um, he made friends with a local um, dog catcher who would... Dog catcher? Dog catcher! <laughs> he, would, <laughs> he'd find the, he would catch the strays and he would humanely dispatch of them. Right. Uh, and such. And uh, he, the guy, the dog catcher, actually taught... Peter, how to it, do it humanely, humanely. Put a dog down. Yeah. But he started experimenting in different ways of putting the the animals down. Right. And when he hit puberty, that's when it all went. All went south. Bit, yeah. boom, psh, <laughs> mental. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and it, it, he started uh, experience certain urges whilst ah. dispatching of said animals. Right. Okay. Lovely. Um, so yeah, he he. He started off with that, and there was um, as he grew up into his adult life, there was a lot of more of the attempted murders. <coughs> Excuse me. And in 1913, he confessed to the murder of a nine-year-old girl, in which he right. broke into the house and um, he cut her throat just while well, she was sleeping. Um, and he confessed to experiencing, and I quote. Carnal release. Bloody hell. When he heard the blood dripping on the floor. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a bit early for this, isn't it? Sorry, man. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and then <clears throat> after this, he then started to, to actually drink the blood of his victims after this point mm. because he thought that it was going to you know, give him an extra high. Right. It turned out it just made him sick, but he just couldn't stop it. Right. Um, so he actually vomited because of it. So after this, he's been caught and everything. Um, at six o'clock on the morning of the 2nd of July, he was executed by guillotine. And he walked unassisted to the guillotine. Um, <laughs> <I know. laughs> we he, said he walked unassisted afterwards. <laughs> like, just, 
just picked up his head and walked <laughs> off. I want to fuck your blood. <laughs> um, and he was flanked by the prison psychiatrist and a priest. Now, right. this is the really interesting bit. Uh, this is like how much of this guy was so... Gone. He was, he was just so apart from everyday life. And shortly before his head was placed on the guillotine, Curtin turned to his psychiatrist and asked the question, tell me, after my head is chopped off, will I still be able to hear, at least for a moment, the sound of my own blood gushing from the stump in my neck? That would be the pleasure to end all pleasures. <laughs> wow. I mean, that's being far removed from reality, isn't it? Whoa! If that's, the, you know, no kind of ap- apology, no kind of dying words oh, or he wishes. Was completely no, no just remorse like, for what he did. Well, I hear my blood dripping from my neck <laughs> as my head hits the floor. Fuck. Yeah. Wow. It's absolutely insane. And in fact, actually, his head still remains to this day. And it's on display in a museum in Wisconsin. Actually, one of the... Well, that would be Wisconsin, wouldn't it? Well, well <laughs> it's a chain of museums. It's not Ripley's, across, is it? It is Ripley's. No way. Yeah. <laughs> His head is on display, fully preserved, in Ripley's, believe it or not. In, in Wisconsin. In Wisconsin. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, there you go. Free shout out. If you're in uh, Wisconsin and you want to see a, 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 a serial killer's head. Yep. I guess it's fairly... Have you Googled it? To see I, if have. Like, oh, I have. I oh, have. Yeah, is it, it's, it's, it's proper... Him. It's him. Wow. You can see it's, it, it's... Well, the thing is, it's split down the middle because what they did was they, they tried to extract the brain to see what the hell was going on with him. Um, but his brain was perfectly formed. It was just... It was just messed up. Big time. Big wow. time. But the, the story is so much bigger, guys. You should go and have a, have a look at it. If, if that's, so if that's because tickled he... your fancy, go and have a look at it. <laughs> yeah. And if it has tickled your fancy, then we may suggest uh, seeking help. Going for a <laughs> yeah. diagnosis. <laughs> yeah. um, you may, in fact, be a sociopath. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so presumably he was called the vampire of Dusseldorf because, of, because he drank the blood of and he, he, the victims. He gained so much... Um, he had so much sexual desire... Right. For the sound of blood. It's the sound of it hitting the ground that was... That's quite a specific... That was the thing that got him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He captured him. I, just, like, I, was, uh, I was sitting in the theatre going, oh my God, I've got to find out more about this guy. Yeah, <laughs> you're writing down. <laughs> I actually did that. <laughs> <laughs> Vampire of... Peter <laughs> Carter. <laughs> Sam was like, what are you doing? <laughs> I never mind. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, nice. I, thought, I thought I'd bring that to you guys. Yeah, no, man, that that's, is... I mean, what a way to start the podcast, eh? <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, I definitely have to, yeah, look into a little bit more of that. And yeah, I definitely want to see the uh, preserved head as well. Mm. That'll be... Um, it's quite something. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Cool, man. Yeah, yeah. no, to take, thanks for uh, bringing that to uh, to the table. Is that... That was... Was that it? Yeah, that is that what it. we got? Yeah, that, cool. Yeah. God, well, there's I'm a lot to more to have a lay down, you know. I don't <laughs> have a sip. Mop, mop my bra off. Have that. a sip yeah, of your coffee have have get coffee. all the origins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, before I get into that, um, I suppose I best um, officially announce what what it is we're actually talking about. <laughs> yeah. Because we've only alluded to it. <laughs> it's been a bit of a tease, don't know why. Because <laughs> you all know what it's about yeah. by now, but... Um, yeah, for those that haven't figured it out, it's um, it's about the legendary werewolf mm. and uh, all of its forms and iterations. Um, <clears throat> I was a little reluctant in kind of how much I went into, you know, kind of the folklore and, you know, characteristics and whatnot, because I'm sure we all know from either books or TV or film, mm. you know, kind of what the the legend and the, the lore is, because, you know, much like vampires, it is quite well documented. Yeah, in some form, you know, whether it's literature or yeah, TV, film, or you know, whatever. But I've I've gone into some of the stuff that I I thought was you know particularly um, you know interesting or stuff that maybe I didn't know to then you know kind of present to you know everyone. But it, I mean, it might be stuff that everyone knows. But uh, yeah, it was fun to kind of look into anyway. So yeah, um, yeah I suppose without further ado, um, oh, let's uh, let's get going. Um, so in folklore. Um, Werewolf or, or werewolf, which is the old English uh, oh s- spelling, um, is yeah werewolf, werewolf, <laughs> werewolf. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's old English. Uh, it simply means man wolf um, and uh, lycanthrope, um, which is Greek uh, and means wolf human. Um, and uh, as as I'm sure we all know, is a human with the ability to shapeshift into a wolf. 
Um, the change is normally deliberate or through the effects of a curse or affliction, i.e., you know, a bite or scratch from another mm. werewolf or, you know. Um, the transformation um, normally takes place at night under a full moon. So keep an eye out tonight if yeah. you're in uh, <laughs> if you're in the uh, Essex area. <laughs> I mean, keep an eye out anyway if yeah, you're in Essex. Just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never mind for Take werewolves. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was um, yeah, it's widespread in European folklore um, with many variants, um, you know, which have been given a, a common depiction again by our good friends, the uh, the Christians. Um, oh. You know, there were kind of some differences in terms of like either the the, the curse or the affliction, or maybe even the uh, the characteristic. Mm. Um, one in particular, which I think was Italian, which was. Or was it Russian? Which was really weird, and I'll, but I'll come on to that um, okay. later. Um, but yeah, it looks like again, like with most things that we've covered in this um, podcast, the, uh, the, the, the 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 Christians came in and uh, yeah, used it to you know for their own mm. you know sort of uses and um, yeah, created I guess more of a consistent um, idea of of what we think is a, a werewolf, whereas demons and, originally demons and it devils. Was, yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, more or less. Yeah, I mean, I mean, because there are some cultures that actually don't believe uh, or see werewolves as being evil at all. Actually, some see That's them as right, guardian yeah. spirits. Yeah, um, and you know, some aren't even a physical form. Mm. You know, some are a spiritual form. Or, yes, you know, or the, the soul, or you know that kind of thing. But I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself. But uh, yeah, that's that's more or less mm. well, that's, what was believed. And then yeah, you know, Christians came and thought, oh, we could use this to scare people and prove that the you know the devil's real. So let's we're going to take that, that and, about com- right. and completely change it. <laughs> Oddly enough, I didn't come across that with any of my research, but I have yeah. heard about that from uh, over the years of listening yeah. to other podcasts and, and stuff like mm. this. That yeah, there's quite often that a werewolf type creature mm. or a dog man sort of yeah, thing or, yeah, has been man. used as a, an ethereal guardian of yeah. a location or a treasure yeah. or something like this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely yeah. like a guard, yeah, sort of like a guardian, yeah, guardian spirit for certain um, cultures, which I didn't know to be fair until I'd started the um, research. I thought it was very much the physical form that we all know from, you know, sort of pop culture, mm. you know, you know, under a full moon and, and all man. that, couple, yeah, all that yeah. business, yeah. Um, now, what I did find quite interesting, and I'm sure we'll come on to this next bit in a future episode, but mm. the belief in werewolves ran parallel with the same belief in witches. Yes, yeah. Um, in fact, like witches, people were put on trial, um, believed to be werewolves. Um, this was conducted mostly in Switzerland. Um, and this started in uh, the 1500s um, and then spread through Europe over the, the coming centuries. Um, but during the early period of the 1500s, accusations of um, lycanthropy um, were linked with, it basically stemmed from uh, wolf riders and like wolf, um, like herders, I guess. Like you, people would keep wolves. Oh, really? And kind of live like with them, live, live among them, have them on their land. Obviously, would ride them or, or you know, ride so, them. Yeah, honestly, yeah, yeah. And sort of have them as like you'd have a herd of sheep in a field. People would have like wolves of varying, you know, sort of species and stuff. And so that's where it all kind of stemmed from. And it must have been big wolves because they thought, Jesus. yeah, well, they were back then, weren't they? They were like the, I mean, people thought that dire wolves were big, but these things were, in, like, yeah. they were enormous. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Enormous. These things. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so, that, so that, that, that's where the initial link came from. Certainly during that um, period, um, very few were actually linked with rich, uh, witchcraft um, itself. But it was quite easy for, for people to be accused of both. Oh yeah, because yeah. it was like well, if you can shape shift into a wolf, then that's like some sort of like black magic. Therefore, you must be a witch. Yeah. So they kind of went hand in hand. Now, the, the, now prove that you can't do it. <laughs> prove that you can't do it. Yeah, yeah. And if you can't, then you're lying. <laughs> And you're a werewolf, but if you do it, 
then you're guilty and you're a werewolf. Well, it's, it's like with Elizabeth, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Convert yeah. back to Catholicism, we'll burn you at the stake or stay a prost- Protestant and we'll, uh, and we'll chop your head we'll, off. Yeah, we'll kill you oh, anyway. Well, I'm <laughs> fucked <Yeah>. either way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a lose-lose for me. So, yeah. yeah. I think I'll stick with being a Protestant. I'll thanks. avoid both, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that was, yeah, that was exactly it. It was, it was quite easy for both to be linked and, yeah, <sighs> it was a case of, yeah, if, if they believed that you were a werewolf, mm. then the way in which you shapeshifted with some sort of magic or, yeah. you know, work of the devil. So you was a witch. Mm-hmm. So it was one of the same. But the, 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 interestingly, got, there weren't a few. I've got a legend from uh, from Germany, actually, that oh, okay. details both of that. Oh, nice. Oh, perfect. There you go. And it's um, the 1500s. Oh, excellent. There you go. You <laughs> I love it how, how it syncs up. I know, right? I'm glad <laughs> Unintentional you said that. as well, of course. I'm glad you said that. Um, so, yeah, and like I say, most of it, kind of stemmed um, f- from Switzerland. And there, there weren't too many that were for both witches and werewolves. That was kind of few and far between. Mm. Um, it was either you were tried as a, a, a sort of a witch or people believed you were a werewolf, but it, there was only a few trials where someone was accused of both. Where there was an overlap. Yeah, yeah okay. Gotcha. Yeah, but the, 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 yeah, they thought there was kind of enough there to, you know, sort of link the two. And I'm guessing it's the sort of magic um, uh, element. Um, and interestingly, almost as soon as the witch trials kind of era had ended, folklore was then taken over or taken up by the belief in werewolves. So it was like, you know, the, the witch trials had happened, you know, almost every young girl was, you know, tried and found guilty of being a witch, burnt at the stake or drowned or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then once people thought that there was no more witches to worry about, their focus then you know, switch to werewolves. And so that's how it then became into, it came into um, reverence really and sort of popular belief and pop culture, I guess, mm. even back then. I, I, you I know, suppose, I suppose. Uh, we, we haven't really changed much as a species. No, sadly not. Whatever the current thing is. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, sadly. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. some uh, some trends are hard to Book kill, burning they? and witch hunts and yeah, you know, exactly, moving yeah. on to whatever the next thing is. And, yeah. uh once one thing has stopped offending you, you find the next thing that offends you. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. Sadly, it's uh, all too familiar, isn't it? Mm. Um, now we've we've already covered a little of the the etymology, um, but there are some other terms that are associated with um, werewolf. Um, what I found quite funny is that uh, a lot of them, and I know we talked about this before we were recorded, but a lot of them are basically just like werewolf but you but said in a slightly different accent <laughs> so <laughs> go on let's try it I'm, I'm not gonna i'm not no, gonna no no no, I'm no, not gonna no no you do, do it, it off there you gotta do it on the, yeah, on the mic come on yeah exactly um come on, if i did so, puerto rico, puerto rico yeah. Yeah, then you gotta do this um so in <laughs> yeah <laughs> so we've got valor for um which is old norse um but due to the significance of werewolves in norse mythology there are so many other words yeah. and, and names of wolves in particular. But yeah, Valor 4 seemed to be the, I don't know if it was the first one, but it seemed to be the most common mm. uh, that it's, sort of came up whenever I searched it in that mythology. That was the word that came up. But once you sort of dived into it a little bit, you would see other references and other names depending mm. on the story or the, the particular myth, you know, within Absolutely. that region. So, Well, that certainly comes from the idea of, of the berserker. The, exactly, yeah, berserkers. Yeah, berserkers yeah. were brought up, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it's like the idea of wearing the animal pelt yes, whilst tripping exactly. balls on mushrooms <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, riding into battle with nothing but the, the animal skins on you. I'll and, say bring that back. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully. That'll scare some people. Well, it? <laughs> I'm off to Valhalla, aren't I? You are, you are. In July, you so are. Um, if, if I come back a little bit different... I know why. You'll know why. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come back with a wolf pelt on me. <laughs> Nothing else. Come back wearing the skin of like a German shepherd, like <laughs> off your off your bollocks on mushrooms. <laughs> Come get inside the animals. With, like tattoos or over your head or whatever. I'm like, oh, okay, he's gone. <laughs> We've lost him. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, so that that's one of many um, names for werewolf in uh, in Norse. Then we've got Old German, um, which is Verlof. Um, and that's almost a direct translation, mm. which you wear wolf, wolf man, and you know, that's Verluf. I'm sure there's probably Germans screaming at the... No like, doubt. That's not how you say it. <laughs> it's <Chaser. laughs> Um and Then we've got uh, Anglo-Norman, um, specifically from Western um, Germany, 
um, which is more or less the same, but it's Farluf. So you've got Farluf and Varluf. Oh, I think okay. it's just the difference between a U and an O in the spelling yeah. <laughs> from what I could, uh, you know, from what I could find. Um, and interestingly, uh, following on from what you just said, um, even in modern Scandinavian, it is believed a 9th century berserker who was believed to, to be a werewolf, um, whereas typically berser- uh, berserkers were like bears mm. in terms of what, you know, the, the skins that they would wear. Um, uh, and that was linked because of the blind rage and fury mm. that would be displayed by the berserker. And that's why they were, you know, sort of linked to, you know, the bears and the, the bear skins and stuff. But there was one um, ninth century berserker in particular who would actually wear wolf uh, wolf skins mm. and, and, and whatnot and wolf like heads and, and yeah. that kind of things. And that's, yeah. And so that's why they believed he was a, a werewolf. It's, um, it's incredible with regards to the berserker as well, is that a lot of people believe that they were just like, regular normal people that when it came time for battle, they, you know, would become the berserker. But no, the actual, it's a real psychology to it. They, yeah. they were like, they weren't really involved with regular everyday living within the villages and towns and all of that. They were outsiders. They were like mercenaries, weren't they? When you went to war, you were like, oh, let's go and, well, no, because let's they were, go and hire them because guys. they were fucking mental. <laughs> yeah. was, they, they had severe um, social difficulties. Yeah. And it would just fly into a blind rage. So that it was like, they, yeah, you're not allowed in the mead, mead hall tonight. Yeah. Like, Rolf, you're not, yeah. you're, you're not allowed in <laughs> tonight. Because <laughs> you're mental, mate. Because <laughs> you are nuts. Yeah, because the moment you get a bit of mead in you, you start howling. You kill everyone. Yeah. yeah well, that, that was exactly it. They would just fly into these blind <clears throat> rages and yeah. snarling and, and, yeah. and like roaring and everything. Mm. And they're throwing stuff about. That's why you send them in first. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. See, that's, so you give them some mushrooms. <laughs> yeah. Here's a bottle of mead and, and some go, mushrooms. Right. Go that way. <laughs> the Saxons are that way. You know, yeah. and... Uh, but I mean, I will say this now: that comes up in the bigger story that I've got nice. later on. Okay, the exact same yeah. psychology. Oh, yeah. I look forward to that. A nice little link for you right there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, thanks. Um, <clears throat> no, I mentioned it uh, the phrase a little earlier, but um, <clears throat> lycanthropy as a term <clears throat> refers to the ability to transform into a wolf or the act of doing so. So it's either mm. as the person who's going through the various stages of the transformation or once they've actually done it. So it's either the, the process or the, the the final result is can both be referred to as uh, uh, lycanthropy. Mm-hmm. Um, it comes from um, the ancient Greek um, leucanthropus, probably butchered that. Um, in- <laughs> interestingly, um, it was only mentioned in um, ancient Greek um, in relation to a condition where the patient had a ravenous appetite. So stemming off what you just said about, you know, the psychology and that of it, mm. um, it is um, widely contested that um, lycan- lycanthropia, put my teeth in, um, <laughs> is a condition, is actually a condition and not a transformation Right. Okay, I understand. So it's not so like just can, so like canthropy mm. being the process of transformation into a wolf, whether physically mm. or mentally, mm. but lycanthropia, yeah, is the actual condition itself. The actual condition itself, okay. yeah, basically, yeah. No, but they believe that it's so it's not the act of you so know mo- walking out under a full moon and then bang, you transform into a, a werewolf. It's mm. it's more of the it's more of a condition that's within that person, so they can they can do it whenever. They don't need to have a full moon right. sort of present. It's more of a, a general condition. So you're more likely to find lycanthropia yeah. in the medical books rather than yes. lycanthropy. Yeah, basically, gotcha. yeah. yeah. Um, there's a, a, a bit, bit of other um, research which I'll, I'll come on to. Um, actually, no, I'll do it now as it makes sense. Um, so there's some... Uh, researchers have, have tried to explain um, the stories of werewolves that, um, and, the, and basically they came from victims uh, displaying recognised medical conditions from other, you know, sort of things. Um, so much like with, you know, the sort of the vampires, people just, you know, linked with like cannibalism or, you know, that kind yeah, of thing. Okay. Researchers try to do the same. Um, and there was a Dr. Lee Illis of uh, St. Guy's Hospital in London uh, in 1963 wrote a paper um, 
titled Porphyria and the Etiology of Werewolves. Now that captured my attention in because particular Porphyria came because up in of the, the vampires. Past two, yeah, yeah. Um, in the paper, he argues that accounts of werewolves um, could have, in fact, been referring to victims of congenital porphyria, which was a condition that they he believed that it was a condition that someone was uh, born with. Uh, he felt that symptoms um, such as photosensitivity, uh, reddish teeth, and um, psychosis. Um, could have been grounds for accusing a sufferer of being a werewolf. Reddish teeth. Yeah, that's a new one. Mm. Okay. Almost like they looked sort of like inflamed or yeah, like reddish. So I'm well, guessing know, it would look like. I guess it would mimic. I know maybe that, like blood on the teeth sort yeah. of thing. But yeah, I know, like pink, a, I know pink tooth is a is a thing because um, my boy he had that. Um, uh, yeah, we, like with his milk teeth, one of them just right. became pink for, wow. for okay. no reason. Um, well, and then yeah. eventually it just it obviously it fell out and his, yeah. his adult teeth have started coming through. But um, yeah, he had, yeah, a, right. he had wow. a pink tooth. One of his canines, actually. Wow. Oh. Okay, there you go. Mm. <laughs> the boy does worry me. Yeah. So, and he, uh, has a, he, he, does, he has a partial taste for red meat, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Drinks yeah. a lot of cranberry juice. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's it. Drinks a lot of cranberry juice. <laughs> sure it is. <laughs> Bloody Mary's. I hope, yes, that's it. <laughs> Well, so, yeah, there you go then. Yeah, if it's actually a known sort of condition in other sort of things, then yeah, this is obviously, mm. so maybe it's a similar thing, but instead of sort of more of a, you know, pink tinge, it was more reddish in, in this um, in this condition. Um, others believed that historical cases of werewolves um, could have been um, sufferers of um, hypertri- hypertrichosis, mm. which is basically um, excess body hair. So when you see people ah, in like yeah. Guinness World Records for being like the you know the hairiest man or whatever, it's that condition. Mm. But early on, people believed that if you suffered from that, then you were actually, you know, gotcha. a werewolf. So yeah, well, there's a, an yeah. early belief that it was because of that condition mm. that spawned people to right. either think that they were or be be accused of. Um, however, it's worth pointing out that many um, historical and uh, mythological werewolves were almost always depicted as true. Um, werewolves with their human counterparts never been described as suffering with a condition. So the link hasn't come from kind of the old mythological stories. It was always just a normal sort of human being mm. had this affliction that when they were in a, you know, under a full moon, they would go through this transformation into a werewolf. It's not like they, any of the sort of human counterparts ever had like a condition or an illness or whatever that, oh, I see. You know what I mean? Okay, so like the characters yeah. in mythology and uh, history, just seem like regular we're people. Never depi- then- yeah, we're never depicted as having an illness or a condition that led to the the transformation. Right. Okay. I so a lot of these are just sort of people trying to rationalise it, mm. I guess, and sort of put logic to you know maybe where the the myths um, you know came from mm. um, with the various medical um, conditions. But yeah, that, that was um, something that jumped out at me in particular, especially with the uh, porphyria, because we yeah. do, we discussed that in the. Uh, first vampire episode, yeah, um, I believe came up um, briefly in the second, yeah, and, yeah, and some of the uh, some of the symptoms of that were heavily linked to people being accused of being uh, a vampire. Well, oddly enough, there is always this link between werewolves and vampires, anyway. Yeah, um, it seems to be a, a sort of a marriage between the two, although they are vastly different. Yeah, you, you can't really have a story without. Certainly, within like Having literature, one, like for yeah. instance, in Bram Stoker's Dracula, he th- Dracula actually he does mm. turn into a wolf man. Yeah, um, and there is obviously there's the underworld series yeah. where it's the vampires versus the, the lichens, lichens, as they called it. Yeah, but yeah, there seems to be this Twilight. Yep, just, God, just uh, you know, yeah, true you blood. To, you had to bloody do that. I yeah. had to. I had to. The true blood. Yeah, true blood as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's, I mean, there's loads of books and literature, yeah. with like the the Anita Blake series yeah. that I mentioned previously. Um, yeah, there's so you can't have one without the other. Yeah, it seems. I don't know if it's because of like the the transformation thing, or it's quite easy to just write a sort of good versus evil, and you know, you've got the two kind of mm. you know well, creatures going at it, sort of thing, and fighting, and well, like the the old Van Helsing you know, film, <laughs> like the, <laughs> like Van Helsing. Yeah, yeah, oh, exactly. God um, awful. Dear Lord. Um, 
Yeah, the, yeah. I must say though, that, that, is, that, that is a bit of a guilty pleasure of mine. Oh, I can I can sit one. and watch it. Yeah, but it's brain you, dead. You do watch it's brain it dead movie. You, God, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's one that you can just put on. You don't have to concentrate on or you know just watch w- intently, but you can just duck in and out. And it's one of those things you just put it on to watch the pretty people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Isn't isn't um, isn't it Kate Beckinsale that's in that? Yeah, Kate Beckinsale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that. So I mean, that's reason enough. Enough said. <laughs> enough said. Um, yeah. One um, one particular um, story. I know we've we've mentioned you know sort of Greek and and Norse mythology, but one story that I found that I know you know about mm. um, from Greek um, is a fairly well known story and believed origin for werewolves, um, and it involves. Um, King Lycan of Arcadia. It does, yeah. Um, he was transformed um, into a wolf because he had sacrificed a child at the altar in the in the, the name of Zeus, basically. Um, Zeus was disgusted by this um, by this act um, because I, th- I think he basically disemboweled the, the boy and then presented his entrails um, to, to Zeus as, story, like a, as like an offering. The story varies, but the, the basic yeah, there are variations, is, is yeah. the same. So the, the story that I know is that King Lycan sacrificed his own son um, oh, wow. in, okay. in, in honour of, of, well, to, to sort of, no, not in honour it was, it was to trick Zeus because he, you know, he yeah. King Lycan, because he was a bit... Um, Bit of a likely lad, sort he's of. He's a, a bit of a showman. Sort yeah, of he thing, thought so. he was just as good as the gods, so he invited yeah. Zeus down for dinner um, and attempted to show him up um, and sacrificed his own son and served yeah. it as just meat. But well, he invited Zeus. Zeus is a bit clever, a bit you know, caught up with with it, and then yeah, yeah. I don't know whether it was an invitation or whether it was just a visit, but Zeus um, basically turns up at you know, at Lycan's gaff. Um, but he's disguised as a common man. So he's not as, you know, yeah. as himself as, you know, a God. Um, and Lycan spots it a mile off. And so uses the opportunity to, you know, test whether this commoner is actually a God yeah. or whether he's just a common man. And and also because he's a bit of a showman, he wanted to kind of, yeah, show off and flex his sort of god muscles i suppose um uh, <laughs> hey everybody hey <laughs> yeah come have a look how good i look pretty much yeah more or less that yeah um and so yeah so king like and basically kills a, a hostage uh, and served um his entrails to zeus disgusted by this um zeus turns him into uh, a werewolf mm. as a as a punishment and that's kind of one of the earliest kind of stories of or mentions at least of werewolf and that's yeah. where they believe because then it's like his descendants then are all werewolves as well which then creates yeah. like the pack and then that's how it all kind of extended from from that point so his, um, his children after the fact became genetic werewolves yes exactly yeah yeah, yeah. and that's obviously where you get the term lichen from yeah so um, i know you know that but just <laughs> yeah that's cool no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so yeah, so that that uh, also wanted to make a, a note of as well because um, I, I had heard it, but I didn't really know the sort of the ins and outs. And like I said, I didn't go mm. too far into it because there are different variations, yeah. but it more or less centres around that that kind of yeah the, the occurrence. Basic, the basic premise. The nutshell. details are different all over the place, and you'd have to yeah. consult an actual Greek scholar to know what yeah. the original story was. But the basic premise was that King Lycan that? served yeah. up human meat to a god. God didn't like it. You're a wolf now. Yeah, yeah, pretty that, much. That that's, it, that's it in a nutshell. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Um, now, just just to kind of, there's just a couple of bits to to sort of end on, um, which are just going into kind of like some of the characteristics and um, sort of the appearance. Um, I know I said earlier that you know there was like a common set of traits and, and you know characteristics that was introduced by you know Christianity, and that's what I'll kind of. You know, that's what I'll kind of go over because that's what everyone, you know, sort of mm. recognises. Um, <clears throat> but, um, yeah, in, in European folklore, it, is, it was believed that you could tell if someone was a werewolf before they actually transformed. Um, the telltale signs that you would look for um, was uh, an eyebrow that met in the middle. <clears throat> basically just a uno brow. <laughs> um, curled fingernails, low set ears and a swinging stride. 
I'm pretty sure I'll work with a, a werewolf. <laughs> so I'm going to be having a word on Monday. I'm like, mate, can I have a word? <laughs> can I have a word with you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, another, another way was to cut into the flesh of the accused and look for fur under the, the wound. <laughs> <laughs> As though like they were wearing like a human skin was this like, all, suit. Is this after they've been accused and been executed? Oh, no, no, oh, no. It turns out he wasn't one. No, I don't think so. No, I think it was kind of someone was accused and they're like, right, well, we need to cut your flesh down. We need to open you up. They'd cut them open. I don't know where. And then they would look in the wound to basically look for signs of fur as though oh, they were wearing like God. a human suit or, you know, like skin suit or something. <laughs> yeah. Like um, wow. like the guy in Men in Black, the uh, Earl suit or whatever. Yeah, Edgar. Edgar, yeah. Edgar suit. Edgar yeah. suit, yeah, basically I'll like that. i put my hands on my head yeah. like I'll this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, a, and I'll pull the wings off a fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> sugar. And <I'm> what <laughs> sugar? Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. But that's um, another episode. Yeah, that'll, that'll come later, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've already done that one. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, a, uh, a Russian superstition um, would have people check for bristles under your tongue if they felt that you were um, a werewolf. Well, that's, that's a little bit less invasive. Than a little less invasive. It makes a little bit more looking sense. under your flesh. Because if you've ever seen like a... Like a cat's tongue, for yeah. example. They've got like the little bristles or like the little sort of spikes that Bobs. go in a certain... Yeah. So I guess you'd be looking for for that. Why under the tongue? I don't know. But yeah, that was a, a superstition. Um, now, there was another one. Because typically werewolves are depicted without having a tail, there was one mm. culture... I'm pre- I pretty... I didn't write this one down because I thought it was just ridiculous, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. Yeah, go for it. Um, More ridiculous, I'm the better. Pre- exactly. And I'm pretty sure it was... Pretty sure it might have been either Italian or Irish. I know both are very different, but... Very different. It was one or the other, I think. Um, obviously, if anyone knows better, then uh, please correct me. But um, basically, what they sort of... What they claimed is that is that the person would run on like three legs so they'd so they'd run on like one hand and, and both their legs and they'd use the other one the talented fella exactly and, and he they would put the other arm behind them so it would look like a tail <laughs> what? <laughs> honestly honestly yeah so they would run on you know three legs and then have one of them like waving behind them so it would look like it was a, a tail and that was a you know that was a common belief in one particular culture as to as to what a as to who was a werewolf. I don't think they were werewolf. I think they were fucking mental. They were fucking nuts. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely off their trolley. <laughs> but oh, here we go. She's oh. off running again. Look. Oh, here we go. Fuck, it's so embarrassing. She's been on the mushrooms again. <laughs> yes, yeah. Well, well she had had her meds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Stop letting her go in the woods by herself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now. Like I say, the appearance of a werewolf in its animal form tends to vary from culture to culture, mm. but typically um, it would be larger than a standard wolf. It wouldn't have a tail. Mm. Um, it would maintain its human eyes and voice, so it would be it yeah. would be, it would, be it would talk as it would in its human form. That was kind of the they were the sort of the common traits that I could find. But each culture, like I say, had a different you know, sort of variation. Some had a tail, some, you know, some didn't. Yeah. Some maintained a human face, but like a, like a wolf body. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, you know, some would have like long snouts, short snouts, sharp teeth, human teeth, you know, big pointy ears, no ears at all. Right. Like there were just so many differences in the characteristic, which I guess lent itself to the particular culture and whatever relevance it, it had to mm. look like that certain way. But, but yeah, they, they were typically the, the kind of the standard, characteristics that you could expect um from uh, from a werewolf from what i could find um now i found a little bit on something that you mentioned um and, and we touched on it at the, the start of the episode but um the irish werewolf is different from any other european you know sort of werewolf mostly because it is not considered as a monster at all mm. the, the uh, this particular shapeshifter is a guardian and protector of children wounded men 
um, and lost persons. Um, according to legend, the Irish werewolf um, were recruited by um, kings in a time of war um, to kind of look over those that were less uh, kind were of less fortunate or the ones that weren't at war. Yeah. So they were kind of, you know, like spirit guardians or whatever. So, so it seems like they're more likely to be part of like the fate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess you're right. Yeah, there'd be more fae like, yeah, especially with it being Ireland as well. Yeah, I guess there'd be more of a fae in that respect. Yeah, so they weren't necessarily they didn't take a physical form like we all recognise, um, like you know, like a human sort of transforming yeah. and they're a physical wolf. Yeah, these were more the uh, the sort of the the spirit or you know the the soul of um, a werewolf. Like I a guess protector spirit sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, like what you read about in um, like Native American. Mm. spirit guardians and yeah, I'll, yeah in, I'll in some uh, Latin countries they have spirit spirit animals spirit animals don't mm. they when they when you cross over and yeah. that kind of thing so it's, I think it's more along those those sort of lines well, oddly enough Ireland the, the etymology of the of the name Ireland actually translates to Island of the Wolves oh right so that might be something yeah, okay. to that as well yeah it could be something yeah I didn't uh, I, from, from what I um because obviously I tried searching, you know, island werewolves and yeah, you know, but you know, and, and I googled that, um, you know, land of the wolves, land of the werewolves, you know, that kind of thing. I didn't really, I didn't, I couldn't find, you know, anything overly compelling. Um, that that was really the only thing that I found, and I thought it was interesting enough that because it was the first thing that, that I saw that depicted them completely different. You know, so they weren't, you know, these monsters, you know, that yeah, just go around feared. eating people. Yeah, an evil. It was actually. You know, sort of a, a nice thing, actually. Oddly so, enough, yeah. it, this came up with the the other legends that we found with with Ireland as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, that the, particularly with the the fey and the the demon side of it, or yeah. you know, the, uh, the, the demonization mm. of the various different legends yeah. hadn't quite made its way to Ireland because they seem to have held on to their their legends and and, and their stories and their original much beliefs better yeah. than the rest of anyone Europe. else yeah so yes yeah, it seems like um but they didn't let christianity change the culture the, yeah exactly yeah didn't let them change that and put an evil spin on stuff they're like well no if we believe that, you know this these people mean good or these creatures are good then that's what we're going to you know stick mm. to and that's very much the case with um you know with, with werewolves from what i could see i mean obviously there's going to be an element of the kind of the carnivorous animalistic element because there is also a belief a belief within this legend that kings at the time mm. would would bring them in at, at a time of war now whether that was just to act as these guardians or whether some were as kind of you know soldiers as well um yeah. you know not too sure but yeah, there's definitely got to be an aspect of that but that that led Very into cool. um this i'm just gonna ad lib this bit because it's just coming to comes to my head but this um led on to a couple of other bits that I saw um, that actually went into the different, like there's different types um, of werewolf. Mm. So we've discussed the main one, which which kind of everyone knows, which is the um, the physical form where, you know, a sort of typically a human will transform into an actual wolf of, you know, varying, you know, size. Um, you know, there's one that's uh, quite spiritual, so what will happen is it will leave the human form in a um, comatose or meditative state, mm -hmm. and then the soul or the spirit of that person will leave the body, and then take the form of um, a werewolf, sort of like um, like a warg, sort of thing, a warg. I've no idea what that um, is. Game of Thrones, <laughs> Game of Thrones. So the idea of um, uh, what was his name, the Stark, Stark lad. Oh, Bran. Brand that's it. Yeah, so like, he's it, like a warg or a warg. Yeah, I, yeah um, I guess to an extent. Yeah. Yeah, the idea of like inhabiting another. Yeah, I suppose. Body. With, yeah, I mean, I suppose with that, yeah, he actually left his body in in an in inhabited a state. Yeah, so I suppose. Yeah, I mean, uh, this seemed to go along the lines of that the actual spirit of the person would leave its you know sort of body and in, and in doing so would then take the form of a werewolf in its kind of spirit. Oh, like manifest. Sort of, into, yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah, I, more I like that kind of thing. Gotcha. But that, that theory could work as well, and I'm sure that is probably part of mm. part of a um, you know uh, you know of a culture. Um, 
many Germanic then, cultures, such the, yes. the idea of a, yeah, a yeah. warg or a warg, yeah. depending on how you how you yeah. pronounce it. But yeah, that's that's yeah. quite a prominent thing in Germanic cultures. Yeah, definitely. Yes, yeah. so I'm sure that's um, yes, yeah, so I'm sure that's an option as well. And then you've got um, yeah, like the whole spirit guardian thing. So y- mm. you can manifest a a spirit. Yep. guardian or guardian angel however you want to you know kind of you know look at it and it can take the form of a wolf or you know a dog um, the Taoist monks have the idea of the tulpa uh, which I brought up in mm. the, previously probably yeah. about a year ago now yeah yeah the idea that a, a tulpa being a thought form yeah. so you if you think about it and put enough um, intention and yeah. uh, thought power behind it it can manifest yeah. in you this can realm. sink it into existence sort of thing yeah big yeah. um uh, the black dogs actually yeah, are yeah. one of the things that comes up quite a bit with yeah, regards that to that. what people see off in the distance and mm. and that kind of thing and yeah so they believe that that is uh, an element of the the whole werewolf legend as well so there's yeah there's i think there was at least three or four main variations that i saw um that that you know we've sort of, um, that we've just covered i'm sure there are more you know to it um well there's is sorry to jump in but there's also on. the idea of an egregore as well so an egregore is, is like a thought form but it's a collective thing so you have like a, a community oh, of a group people. of people yeah yeah so you've got like a village of people that believe that there's a werewolf out there in the woods yeah and that collective belief creates an egregore manifests it, yeah. and manifests this, yeah, this absolutely, werewolf yeah. type creature if it happens on an individual scale, then yeah, I'm sure a group can, um, you know, can can do it as well. So yeah, so and that's what I thought was interesting because again, the interesting one is you know the, the the popular one is to just go with the you know the transformation from human to wolf, and uh, you know the affliction that that comes with. But um, yeah, I actually thought it was quite interesting, you know, to sort of explore, you know, those other. Um, you know, there's other options oh, for more of a yeah. kind of energy or spiritual. Well, it's more um, of a, like an esoteric sort of mm. uh, origin of the yeah. idea of the werewolf, it, like specifically that, because uh, that could possibly explain the idea of like um, shared psychosis or something like that. You know? Yeah, that, that, that's what they that's what they mentioned exactly. That so they said that when someone l- sort of left their human form, uh, whether it is a, as an energy or as a spirit, and then took the form of the you know the, the wolf whatever then happened to the wolf would happen to the human body. So if they got cut or, you know, oh, okay, stabbed yeah. or, or hurt or whatever it might be, then then that pain was felt by the human form. So there was a right. shared there was a shared bond between the two. So it wasn't completely separate. There, there was, yeah, like a shared... You get yeah, hurt in the Matrix and, and you get hurt in the real world. Exactly right, yeah. Okay, yeah. Exactly right. That, that's why The Matrix was a documentary and not a film. We all know that. We all know that. Come we on. We all know that. Oddly enough, actually, <laughs> my folks have been getting through uh, films. Okay. And on Friday night, they decided for the first time to watch The Matrix. The first time? The first time. Wow. Yeah. So I haven't spoken to... This was Fair on late than night. never. Right. This is on Friday night, so... Oh, gotcha. I'm going to have to uh, pop around there and see what they thought. Yeah. So, <laughs> what did you think? Yeah. <laughs> are we living in The Matrix? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was quite obvious that we are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Even back then, it's yeah. Far more logical that we are, isn't it? Yeah, this exactly. Yeah. It's own existence. Absolutely, oh. yeah. But, um, but yeah, but that's it for, that's it for me with uh, cool. the usual... The usual gubbins. Excellent. So, um, well, yeah, over I'm, to you with what you've found, man. Well, I'm quite glad that, um, you know, we, we started talking about the, the various different legends and such. And I've got mm. one um, that comes from the later part of the 1800s. Oh, nice. Okay. And it's uh, it saw a mysterious tale of a shape-shifting uh, creature mm. in Germany. Um, yeah. And uh, this particular part, of, well, Germany in particular. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, I'll shut it. <laughs> Alice Clark. <laughs> I don't know why, but I always go a bit homosexual when I do it. Yeah, I don't know. I can't. I don't know it's hard, it yeah. I might be gay in German. I don't know. Either go like SS, like SS trooper well, or I homosexual. Yeah. It's like, where are your peppers? <laughs> My what God. is your name? <laughs> yeah, 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 it's one of the, it's one of the two, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so um, that's us jumping on the stereotypes yet again. <laughs> yeah, apologies. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Germany itself, actually, as you, as you mentioned previously, has a... A real history with regards mm. to the the legend of the werewolf, um, yeah. and this one in particular. Actually, sorry, just to cut in, just because it's popped in. What I read last Go night is uh, Hitler had an interest. Honestly, uh, yep. had an interest in werewolves, and one of his um, operations, I can't remember which one now. I did read it last night, but yeah. it was called Operation Werewolf. 
right. because of his fascination um, well, he, he, with them. So he, it was a Nazi um, operation that was called The Nazis definitely Werewolf. had, had yeah. a thing about um, esoteric knowledge and occult knowledge. Yes. And that's why they, they had so many different um, expeditions to Tibet. So, they went in, went in hunt of um, the big guy, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. They went, they, well, they, they went in hunt of him, uh, but they also went in hunt of... Um, so really, the, they were the only, they were the first people outside of Tibet that were allowed in. That were allowed in, yeah. Which is... That's right, yeah. Remarkable, really. Yeah. Um, but they, they, they went on expeditions across the entire world looking yes. for various different artifacts and um, basically exploring different legends that have come through throughout history and antiquity. It was, they, they were on the hunt for something, man. Mm. It was just, it, yeah. I don't think the, the rest, the allied forces really understood what it was that the, that mm. the Nazis were looking for. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that's we that's digress. A that's Sorry, a that's yeah. a different podcast. Yeah, that that's that's Bigfoot Part Two, probably. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. But um, yeah, sorry, no. It's just because you mentioned that, and then it just that thought just popped oh, in okay. there. So I thought I'd. That's cool. I like that though. So I thought I'd um, yeah well, mention that. So yeah, I sorry. Look, I might look into that in my uh, yeah. spare time then. Yeah, definitely. Well, this one in particular, this particular story comes out of um, uh, Ludwig Ludwig's last um, in eighteen seventy nine. Um, now it's it's named that way because of Prince Ludwig, uh, Ludwig even. Um, he really liked the area, so he decided right. to build his palace there. Um, Why the hell not? And uh, but, it, however, it seems like the area was dominated by werewolves. I do. In particular, a family of werewolves. Right. Okay. Kind of like uh, dog soldiers. Mate, what a film! <laughs> what a film! Great. Film. Don't. It's one of the best. Great film. One of the best werewolf uh, films. That and Wolfman. Yeah. With Benicio del Toro. Yeah, that's, that's excellent. That is really film, good. Is. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the. Area was a favourite for hunting wild animals in particular. Yeah. And one creature became almost legendary, and it was a large wild wolf, seemingly completely unaffected by bullets. Mm. Um, the beast would even creep up on hunters and steal their their, their kills, their bounty or their yeah. food or, yeah, or yeah. whatever. Like, what's their, like, camping up for the night and whatnot. Mm. Um, others said in quiet tones that suggested that Ludwig's lust had its very own werewolf um right and if this tale is correct then they may have been right okay so it starts off with uh, one day a cavalry man um rode atop of his horse to meet a man that history records him as the name of feeg right so f double e g and uh he lived in an he had, um, he had brothers park. didn't he five foe and five <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Stupid joke. <laughs> Fig fire and foam. Fum, yeah? Fum, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Sorry. You really tickled uh, yourself there, didn't you? Yeah, well, someone has to. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's got to laugh. If you can't laugh at yourself, then Big fire and fire and fire. Yeah. Fun, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Wow. Well, Sorry. Well, oddly enough, that story came out of Germany at all. So. <laughs> a happy accident, then. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, well Feig lived uh, in a, quite a remote part uh, yeah. of the area. And, uh, you know, when he finally got to, to his house, um, he didn't find Feig. <laughs> found foam. <laughs> <laughs> like, Sorry, <laughs> he uh, he was actually he was actually confronted by a terrified group of of young children, um, and they were like in hysterics. They were crying. They were, they were yelling, and the group would, like they were trying to tell the the soldier that um, that none of the family was home, except for like the young boy, the right. youngest lad in the family, and that he'd shape shifted into a werewolf before their eyes. It was like they was screaming, shouting, absolutely terrified. So um, they, they, they decided that they were going to, you know, the kids. He said, like, kids, get out of the area. Just go and stand. Just go and stand by the fence. Yeah, yeah. Just get on the other side of the fence because that will protect yeah. you. That will if there is you, indeed yeah. a giant wolf. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so he made his way toward the house. And as he got to the door, the, the, the boy came into view um, in human form. And the cavalry man ordered 
him to tell him what has been happening. So what the hell is all this mm. commotion? You know, I'm here to meet Feig. Mm. Um, <laughs> I can't say that name Sorry. now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, where is he? Where, you know, what's going on? So the boy told him that it, that it wasn't just him in the house, but his, his old grandmother was in the house as well. Yeah. Um, and she actually comes in this story. She comes across as a wizened old witch, right? Okay. And she was in possession of a magical strap that, when he wore it, he would transform into a wolf. Um, so, <laughs> rather than like burning him straight away, he says, "Well, prove it then. Come on, if you those those are your claims, yeah, prove it." <laughs> so he actually gives him a chance to prove it, and the boy, you know, goes, "Yeah, okay then." So. Leaving nothing to chance, the soldier, <laughs> the soldier, <laughs> told him not to put the tie on yet, like the strap, but wait until I'm softly, uh, safely in the loft, um, and I'll take the step ladder out, and then you can put it on. <laughs> right, okay. The soldier with his with his saber and everything. Yeah, like, yeah. No, 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 I'm gonna get up there just in case. Yeah, just in you, case you actually you get do up there, turn into yeah. a werewolf. I'm yeah, gonna get up yeah. there and I'll be safe because I've got the ladder. Yeah. And you won't be able to jump the, you know, the four <laughs> yeah. feet. And then to... he says, do your vast. <laughs> <laughs> do your vast. <laughs> do your vast. <laughs> and uh, as he placed the belt around him, an uncanny transformation occurred within the boy. And he mutated into the form of a large, formidable wolf. Um, he ran outside, terrorised the kids for a little bit. <laughs> And then run back in, and uh, he flung the belt off, and immediately transformed back into the boy. What's the significance of the belt? Does that make him it's change just, into it or something? Or? Exactly. Yeah. So the the the, the so it's like a talisman or like a the belt is enchanted with ah, right, the magic. Gotcha. So again, it goes into that the like a belt that, like what I'm thinking of that you put around your waist. Well, it says a strap. So a strap, I've got right, an okay. idea that it's like a belt. Yeah. Sort yeah. Of thing. Okay. Um, cool. But yeah, I guess it's sort of mm. the same sort of thing that like the berserkers do when they put something on, it changes them. It, yeah, yeah. It, it, there's there's something that is enchanted or yeah. something like okay. that. It's infused with the magic of mm. the wolf. Yeah, I get that. Okay. Um, so yeah, so the, despite the boy's like savage state when he was in like wolf form, um, it turned out he was actually quite placid and even polite, and let the the soldier actually. Um, examine the belt closer, but yeah. on examination, it just looked like a belt right. or anything like that. He yeah. put it on himself and nothing happened. Mm. Um, so we thought that this was strange. So it's something that's specific to this boy. Mm. Um, as he, because he, he was looking for Big, he couldn't find him at the house. So he decided to go into town and yeah. he ended up sharing his story with a local forester. Okay. Um, who, upon description of the wolf was like, well, this is the wolf that has been terrorising us, mm. you know, who's been stealing our, our food, our, our kills, um, eating our livestock, it basically just terrorising the village. Um, and, you know, told the soldier that it's bulletproof. Like, is it, we shoot it and nothing happens. So the hunter prov- like proved to be highly productive and somehow secured a number of silver bullets. Because this was a, a yep. thing that comes up with, with regards to werewolves, is that you can only kill them with a silver bullet. So soon after this, the bulletproof wolf made another appearance, and was terrorising locals, eating livestock, etc. Yep. Um, and at first, it was the same old story. Like they were shooting at it, and regular bullets seemed to have no effect on the creature at all. Um, and then, this particular hunter, this this forester shot it with one of these special uh, silver bullets and it hit the animal on its hind legs and it fell to the ground. But even when they tried to uh, subdue it, to, to bind it yeah. up, it proved to be too powerful and, right. it, and it leapt up and it bounded away from them. But it was because it was wounded, it wasn't able to get away quite so quickly and they were able to follow a blood trail. Right, gotcha. And they follow, followed it all the way to the Feig home. Right. And upon entering the house, they slowly and carefully, they couldn't see a wolf anywhere. Um, but lying in one of the beds was the old lady, the grandmother, the, the witch character. Um, 
And uh, because of the, the silver bullet, she wasn't able to fully transform back into human form. And there was a massive fluffy tail <laughs> hanging out of the bed. <laughs> so this is an old woman with a fluffy tail, basically. An old woman with a fluffy tail. Um, what actually happened to the woman and, and, and the kid is, is actually unknown. The story doesn't go on further than that. Oh, okay. But what we, what we do know, however, is that in the 19th century, um, there was a, a chronicler called uh, Karl Barched, um, and he investigated the story deeply. Mm. And the story itself actually still circulates to this day in Ludwig, Ludwig's last. So it's right. still a prominent yeah, yeah. legend to this day. Yeah, that's cool. And speaking of legends, the <laughs> ones that can actually be verified, right? we've got our own one. Do we? We've got our own one, and it's the South End werewolf. Oh, uh, Okay. Yeah, now, yeah. the first time, this, yeah. first time I ever heard about the South End Werewolf was on Not Another Conspiracy Podcast. I was just going to say, the NAC guys mentioned it, didn't yeah. they, first, yeah. Yeah, so go go check those guys out. Yeah, um, that's right. Another Conspiracy it, yeah. Podcast, brilliant podcast. Um, and, yeah, it was the first time I ever heard of that. Yeah, same. Um, so I thought, right, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. this is it. This is this me is the, the time, time yeah. to actually get into <laughs> yeah. it. So it starts off um, in 1952. On this day, a nine-year-old William Ramsey was out in his garden um, of his family home playing by himself as he tended to do. Now, he would often spend hours out there in his own little world, um, lost in his imagination, yeah. you know, playing knights and dragons. And, and, and in this, you know, this particular day, um, they'd gone to uh, the cinema okay. and they watched a film about the World War II pilot. So he's, he was out there being a World War II pilot. And after about an hour... He suddenly felt this this wave of, of cold rush over him. It was like a he describes it as an icy chill. Um, even though it was like a warm and pleasant day, it was just this this cold just just came over him. And after this initial chill, he started shaking uncontrollably, and he could detect this really unpleasant odor like permeating from like the area around him. Um, and he says. Um, have you ever walked into a meat locker right after you've been outside on a hot day? That's what it felt like. I was playing and my body temperature was normal and then, well, I'd say it felt like my body temperature dropped a good 20 degrees. Sweat froze on me and my whole body was started shaking. It was as if I'd opened this door and stepped inside another dimension or something. Wow. Mm. And there was this odour, very foul. Uh, a few years later, a sewer in our street had backed up I'd never smelled anything like it before. Um, as bad as the, the, the gases that escaped from, mm. from this particular um, sewer. And the, that was the smell that he had to this day. And it right. still makes him wretch. Just remembering it. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So it's quite a powerful ha- memory then. Yeah. Something happened then that like he wasn't able to, to detect mm. regularly. But when this chill came over him, Suddenly, his sense of smell became heightened, yeah, which is incredible. So, at this point, he he stood there, kind of like a bit be- bit bewildered, and then at some point, his mother came over like to him to to, to ask like, "What's what's wrong? You you yeah. look a bit off, like because he's 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 shaking and yeah. he's sweating all over the time, and she's trying to snap him out of his little days, and then all of a sudden." Uh, Ramsey, he, he, he's overcome by this blinding, inexplicable, burning rage, as he as he puts it, and a deep growl comes out of his mouth. Not only that, he allegedly tore up a near like nearby fence post and completely tore it out of the ground and started swinging it around like a baseball bat. So wow, a nine year old boy. Yeah, and he picked up a, 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 a <coughs> fence post. Fence post with all the concrete on it as well. Mm. So it's oh, got wow, a right, bit okay. of weight to it. Yeah, yeah. So this is very, very out of character. And at first, his, his mum was like, fuck this, I'm going inside. <laughs> like, he's swinging, nope. a, he's swinging a fence <laughs> post around. Like, yeah, yeah. This, this, it just makes no sense. So she initially retreated into the home and like, called her husband down and like they're watching him through the window and, like, Usually, like, William's quite a, a mild-mannered boy, you know. Yeah. He's nice and chilled. He plays by himself. He's not over the top, loud. He never flies off into blind rages. Right. Or anything like this. Um, 
but they were watching him as he was tearing apart this wire fence with his bare hands and even like biting it as well. He was wow. gnawing at it with his teeth. So That's mad. William's dad, he's, he's like, well, I've had enough of this now. He goes out there to, to try and stop him. Mm. But he was met with a strength far beyond what he was expecting and what should have come out of a nine-year-old boy. And he was unable to pry the fence post out of his hands. Um, so again, he also went, fuck this. Yeah. I went back inside and waited until... Nope. Yeah. yeah. So after this like, epic tantrum yeah. <laughs> sort of thing. More or less, yeah. That's what it sounds like. That's it? what it was, yeah. Epic t- tantrum. Um, William, he, uh, he began to calm down and he, he dropped the fence post and he started panting like a dog. And blood was dripping down his chin from like the cuts of where he'd been biting the fence. And he eventually just calmed down and kind of wandered inside and then promptly fell asleep. Mm. And then didn't wake up until the following morning. Um, well, that's, that's one thing that he's actually uh, part of the symptom of transforming um, into a, a werewolf is the um, the exhaustion in the human form yeah. of the whole sort of ordeal. So, you know, it's when you see in the films, like when they become weak, you know, and they sort of stagger and, you know, they lazily sort of transform back into the human form. It's because it uses up so much energy that they're completely depleted. Mm. So, yeah, that's quite... Well, I mean, the the kid was... Accurate in that respect. ...was swinging a fence post over his head, yeah. swinging it around. That's, that takes a lot of yeah. a lot of strength, even for an adult to yeah. do that. Yeah, I was going to say, so, yeah. Yeah, he's going to be... Mm. He's going to be knackered after <laughs> yeah. that, that's for sure. Absolutely. Now, the... the for the rest of his childhood, it seemed like there was no issue. The, the, like this was the only outburst, this only the only occurrence of this sort of thing throughout yeah. his childhood. So, for the most part, he had a, a quite a peaceful, normal life. Um, you know, he, he went on to, like I say, have a normal life. Um, he got married and had three kids. Um, however, it wasn't long after he got married that he started having these vivid nightmares which he was waking up pounding and, and growling like an animal. Yeah. Um, now, eventually, the these bizarre dreams that they stopped in around about 1967, um, after the, the family had seemingly freed Bill mm. of, of yeah. what had, like, captured him. Mm. Um, so, basically, what happened in, in the early parts of... 1983 Bill went out drinking with a group of friends and he claims that he felt that same sudden rush of icy cold sweat that he had felt when he was a kid um it just like at first it didn't occur to him he just yeah. oh this feels this feels a bit weird and feeling ill you know, he went to went to the toilets and uh, he looked in the mirror and in the mirror looking back at him was a wolf wow and he, he was like freaked out by this because he just, all he could see in the mirror was just, it wasn't himself looking at him. It was the wolf looking at him, which I thought was weird because of the idea of the vampire. They don't have a reflection. They don't have a reflection because yeah. when you do look in it, all you see is yourself. Yeah. Is that sort of yeah, the yeah. psychology behind it? Um, so he, <laughs> a little bit unsettled by it. He said like, Look, I've got to go home. Do you mind you yeah. know, taking me home? I've had enough now. And, so when he's sitting in the car, riding with his friends, he reportedly was... Stuck over- his head out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Loves a car ride. <laughs> Barking at the traffic. We go to the park, we go to the park, we go to the park. Squirrel. <laughs> There's another dog in that car. <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> well, he just, he, well, he doesn't quite do that. He's... um. He just he's again. He comes over this like this blinding rage comes over him. He, he right. can't resist it, and he's he, he he completely lost all control. And he starts snarling wildly, and he attempts to bite his mate's leg. He's trying to bite his mate's leg, and they go whoa whoa whoa, and they they, they pull over, and they're struggling to like hold him down, mm. struggling yeah, to yeah. Re- restrain him. There's at least three fellas trying to hold him down, and he's pushing them off and he's he's fighting them like yeah, yeah. They, they're struggling to keep him down what the hell um, he later would say that he, he doesn't remember that at all he like he remembers getting into the car and then he Blank. woke up the next day in his bed wow like he had 
for him, he had some missing time. Um, now, in the Christmas, around the Christmas of 1983, um, so not long after this, so mm. probably less than a year after this, and he started beginning beginning to get like these sharp chest pains yeah. as well. So, and like sweat pouring over his upper body. And at first, he thought he was like the the onset of like a major heart attack, which you would. Yeah, yeah. Which is fair That'd enough. Be the first go to, wouldn't it? Um, so he he pops over to South End A and E, and when he's sitting there on the gurney preparing to be examined, mm. that same cold chill came over him and the, the, the sweat started freezing on him and he was thinking, oh my God, here we go, here we go again. And at one point, as a nurse bent over him to, to examine him, he let out this guttural roar and lashed out at her with his teeth and he bit into her arm. Wow. And... After he bit her, he threw around furniture, scurried into a corner, was growling and roaring and pacing around like an animal. Then the police arrived and they attempted to restrain him. But again, he was immensely strong. And he did, he, they just couldn't, they couldn't get him down. And yeah. eventually they managed to sedate him with tranquilizers. But all the while he was still snapping his teeth and roaring like a wild beast. Um, the witnesses would later say that Bill seemed completely and utterly animalistic at the time. Like with his hands like curved into claws, his teeth bared, he was lashing out at everyone around him, snarling and, and growling. That's mad. They, they, absolutely incredible. Like to see something like this, a full grown man acting like that must have been quite jarring. Yeah, I bet. So after they had sedated him, they took him to Runwell Mental Hospital in Chelmsford. That's fair. Uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> it really is fair. Yeah. Um, but when the, the drugs actually wore off and Bill claimed again to have no recollection of mm. what had happened. So it just, it just come around all groggily in this strange, yeah, strange place. Like, how the hell did I get to Chelmsford? How the hell did I get to Chelmsford? Yeah. Um, and uh, doctors actually suggested that Bill stay and undergo some more evaluation and testing. Um, he declined because apparently he had voluntarily chucked himself in. Yeah. Even in his sedated state. Yeah. Um, which I thought was quite odd. So he went home and off he went. Um, less than a month later, so in January 1984, um, he had gone to visit his his mum, his mother, um, elsewhere. And when he was driving back, back home, he felt another episode coming on. So... He rushed back to South End A and E. <laughs> they must have all fucking all this oh, him again. again. Fuck <laughs> him yeah. again, Jesus. Yeah. Um, but by the time he had arrived, the the he had this wolf like ferocity had already started to consume him. Yeah. And when a lone nurse told him to to wait a moment for a doctor, Bill allegedly lashed out at her and threw her roughly to the floor. I can't, I can't read that properly because I think of Pontius Pilate. Who him said to him, Waffly? Who him to the floor? <laughs> Sorry, a little digression there. No, I like that. Who him to the floor? Very yeah, Waffly. <laughs> um, after he threw her to the floor, roughly. Waffly. Waffly. <laughs> he, he started pouncing on her and. and he pounced on an orderly as well and tried to choke him and was trying to bite him as well. Police arrived and it was four officers this time and they wearily circled Bill. I bet. Not really wanting to have a go. Yeah. None of them. Thinking like just let him calm down. Oh, absolutely. Um, one of them bought fuck this, right, I'm going to get on it. Yeah, yeah. Just a look, look, bunch of Jessies, let's, let's jump on it. Let's just take this geezer down. He ended up getting hurt this particular officer and apparently um, spent four days in hospital afterwards. Hell. I don't know exactly what like, Bill had done to him. Yeah. But he messed him up pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Um, they, they was, they doubled up on the handcuffs as well because they thought that one pair wasn't going to contain him. Jesus. So th- that's how much strength he was exhibiting at that point. Yeah. Um, these blind rages. It's, mm. it seems to be a really, really common thing with this. Mm. Um, sounds very much like along the same lines as the Norse Berserker. 
Yes. Doesn't it? Yeah. Just yeah. Blind into blind rage. Yeah. Incredible strength. Um, I wonder if there was a link between all of the occurrences with um, w- uh, William, wasn't it? Yeah, w- yeah. Bill for sure. Bill, yeah. yeah. If, if there was any kind of similarity between all of the occurrences to, uh, you know, identify like a trigger. Yeah. Of, of what would have... Seems to be no- nothing. nothing. There's nothing. Right. There seems to be a trigger. I mean, you were, you the first occurrence in his adult life, you, you could suggest that alcohol played a factor in it. Mm. But otherwise... No, not really. No, not right. really. It doesn't okay. seem to be any particular trigger. Mm. Um, now, in the evening of July 22nd, 1987, um, Bill stopped by the bar, the uh, the White Horse Inn in Malden. Okay. Nice place, actually. Yeah. Nice place. Um, he was there, there having a good time, having a drink and, and whatnot, and um, it got him fairly drunk. Yeah. And with it being 1987... Drink driving wasn't really an issue back then. Or <laughs> well, it was. It just wasn't just frowned upon. Cared, yeah. yeah. No one gave, gave a shit. And, yeah, yeah. You know, people would, would just go to the pub and yeah, drive home drive blind home. drunk. Yeah. Um, now, nevertheless, he got in his car to drive home. And at some point on the drive home, he came across a lone prostitute. Now... Well, they don't normally hunt in packs, do they? So. <laughs> yeah, they're solitary creatures. <laughs> exactly. Um, now, he, for some reason, now this kind of sounds a bit dubious, he had the bizarre plan <laughs> that he was going to perform a citizen's arrest on her. Oh, yeah, of course he did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'd say that. Well, so, Bill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Pull the yeah. other one, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> so he pulled the van over and invited oh, her Oh, a van in. as well. Oh, it's a van a as citizen's well. arrest in a van. Yeah, it's probably yeah. a white one, okay. you know, being Essex and white, yeah. a white transit van, yeah. being close to Dagnum. Absolutely, and yeah. Dagnum factory and whatnot. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was, uh, that was his story anyway. He was going to perform a citizen's arrest. Of course he was, yeah. In a friendly way. Of course. Um, however, as they drove, she began to get this very strange, like ominous feeling about right. Bill, yeah. um, as if he meant to do her harm, and which is a phenomena that that came up um, in that psychology talk. Right. That some of the victims of these serial killers got away just in time because they just had this weird feeling. Like one of them. Um, uh, it was. Uh, it didn't come up in the talk, but it's one that I knew about previously. Yeah, and it was um, Ted Bundy. Oh, yeah. One of Ted Bundy's potential victims was actually Debbie Harry from Blondie. Oh shit! Yeah, she. Wow. She actually got in his car in his VW Beetle, but she just got this really, really weird feeling about him, mm. and she managed to get out of his car at the lights. Um. And there's, but there was quite a number of his victims that had the same sort of feeling because he was quite, a, he was a quite good looking fellow, very mm. charismatic. Yeah, yeah. He was able to to seduce them to getting into his car. Mm. Um, but there was quite, an, and it, it was something that came up with a lot of these various different serial killers over the talk that yeah. a lot of the potential victims had this really, really weird feeling, like run, get yeah, out, yeah, go, yeah. Um, so yeah, right. that's, that's, that's interesting, man. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. Like they just got this feeling, yeah. just an unease. They're in the presence of a predator, mm. sort of thing. Literally a predator. <laughs> yeah. Literally, like yeah. So as the car, as the the van slowed enough, um, she jumped out. She like tuck and roll, get out, <laughs> um, <laughs> and she made her way like running to towards the the local police station. Right. Um, Bill allegedly stepped out and followed her. Um, and as she's screaming, shouting, get away from me, get away from me, the a police officer came out of the station and um, <laughs> this rage came over him again and he attacked the police officer and he threw him to the ground and he again started choking him. Um, now, the officer was considerably bigger than, than Bill. Right. And... The officer said, I, "I couldn't, I couldn't stop him. I was overwhelmed by him. He just had this supernatural strength over him, um, and he was easily just, he was throwing him around like a like a rag doll." Mm. He says, um, and he apparently he kept saying to the officer, "The devil is in me. I'm going to kill you." And then <laughs> all know. the commotion um, brought out another six officers, and even they struggled. To, to get him off of the, the first officer and subdue him. And it took several injections of, of tranquilizers to finally subdue him. Bloody hell. 
Like, that's a lot. That's strong. That's yeah. a lot. Um, now, Bill finally checked himself into the mental hospital for further evaluation. And uh, after loads of tests that were run on him, they did x-rays, MRI scans, various psychiatric tests. Yet there was no discernible cause for why he was flying into these blind rages and certainly for this this incredible strength. So there's no mental triggers or any of his like sort of past well, or upbringing or... Exactly. There was yeah, no, nothing there was no trauma in, yeah. his, in his childhood. He had a fairly yeah. normal childhood, no... Um, no trauma, no abuse, or no abuse, yeah. nothing like that. Um, even in his adulthood, it just had like a regular sort of life. Yeah, um, there were certainly no l- neurological issues that they could find right. with the MRI scans and the X-rays. So, like, if there was any some like a blunt force trauma or mm. something like that that can trigger, has been known to trigger psychotic episodes in in people. Yeah, um, but there was nothing, nothing at all, um, and certainly with like the the, the, the physical examinations, they couldn't explain the strength either. Yeah. Um, so with seemingly nothing wrong with him, physically or mentally, they they let they let him go after 10 days. They said, well, we can't keep you in. Can't keep you there's, there's nothing wrong with you. Nothing yeah. wrong with you, mate. You know, yeah. you, you're got, just weird. You've got to go home. <laughs> yeah. You know, like check yourself in, like get a, get a, a bike lock. Every time you feel it coming on, lock yourself yeah. up to something or whatever. Um, but it's funny you say that because that's what um, <clears throat> what's his name does in Moon Knight. He does, doesn't Disney. he? Mark yeah, uh, Mark Spectre, like- Spectre and was it Stephen Grant? And that's it. Lockley or whatever his name is. Jake Lockley, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah um, puts a bike lock on his, yeah, on his ankle. Change it to the, the bed post, doesn't he? Or yeah. the post in his room. It's yeah. an odd series that. I, I've not finished it. I've got the last Good. two to go, but I've had to power through the. God awful accent. Oh, are they saying that? You get we're used gonna, to it, gonna you? digress. You do yeah, get used it. to it. But um, I watched a film the other day, um, M. Night Shyamalan. So you can, you can imagine oh, it's a okay, weird one. Yeah. It's called Old. And it's where like these like one. families and, and groups and stuff are all on holiday and they get sent by the resort to this uh, beach. Yeah. Um, and weird stuff starts happening. And most of it is that the kids basically age 50 years in like the space of a day. Yeah. Um, but anyway, one of the one of the characters is a is a, a an old, well older English guy. Mm-hmm. He's like he's a doctor and he's got himself like a young, bimbo girlfriend or whatever. Of course, but he but now he's actually English. The actor, yeah. he wasn't putting on an accent or whatever, but he sounded exactly like <laughs> Oscar Isaac <laughs> in Moonlight. And I watched, and I thought, cool oh, for, blimey, he was like, oh bloody hell, you know, cool blimey, governor, you know. So it's like an Englishman doing a bad impression of what Americans think English people sound like. Yeah, the, like, Dick, the Dick Van Dyke school yeah, of uh, accents. That's sort of it. Thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I thought he's actually English. I was like. So do we actually sound like that then? That's the, that's the thing, yeah. I think... Because until those two kind of characters or, or actors, I can't say that I've recognised that accent as actually being well English, aside from the over-the-top accents kind of like, in um, Guy Ritchie films, but... Well, I'd noticed this with Oscar Isaac. He did those little English things that were doing, like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah that's a bit silly, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. like, it, it was I realised f- that actually yeah we kind of we do, do that. that yeah we do that but it's all like the all the apples and pears and all the yeah uh, there's all not the, much all, of that in there's just anymore. a little bit some of it was a little I thought was a little bit too forced and at the time I just couldn't get it I thought this is just annoying but then I, yeah like I said I watched this other film with an actual English like actor and I thought Oh right, shit! Oh, come on, Harry Potter. Maybe we do and all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Come yeah. on now. Yeah, you know, true. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it, yeah. A, it's, it's the same. It's the same thing, though. The Americans that we hear on our films and TV. That's no probably doubt. not how Americans mostly sound. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's in non-regional Cause, accents. Cause they're not all from like Alabama or <laughs> like yeah, exactly. New Orleans or whatever. Yeah, they're yeah. non-regional accents. I guess they got a, you know, they got yeah, exactly. they non-regional got accents for yeah, yeah. for us English and, and yeah, whatnot. Yeah. So yeah, I guess it makes sense. But yeah. Sorry, yeah. yeah no, that's, that's a little. Cool. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so um yeah, back to this police station attack. Yeah. Um so it's actually made international headlines. Is it really? Yeah, it got into um do you remember the tabloid paper, The People? Yes. Well, they caught on onto the story, and then that story went international. Wow! Um, and it was dubbed the South End Werewolf. Um, now, 
Ramsey had went on to have several more violent anim- animalistic episodes, um, and it prompted so much so it prompted him to go to the police and plead to be locked up just to stop him from from harming anyone. Yeah, um, very much like the typical legends of the werewolf, like yeah. the stories of the wolf man. Yeah, you know, lock me up because otherwise I'm going to kill you. That that yeah, sort yeah. of thing. Now, yeah, these people want the curse or the affliction. It's been sort of bestowed upon them in one way exactly, or another. That and they can't control they it. They can't control it yet. So yeah. it seems like it's it's escalating now within his adult life that he's getting more and more episodes and they're becoming more and more violent. Um, now, because the, the story went international, it caught the eyes of our famous demon, demonologists and supernatural investigators, the Warrens. <laughs> Oh wow! Okay, yeah, the Warrens wow. caught her, um, caught the story. Any opportunity? Yeah, and um, they actually, whilst they were over in London investigating the Enfield haunting, yep. they popped over to to South End, Queen Victoria's favourite resort. The Warrens have been to South End. The Warrens have been to South End. No and, way. Um, they sat down with Bill and his wife and. Uh, they decided, right, we're going to investigate this. And initially they were they were quite suspicious of it being a hoax. Yeah, you know, course, like yeah. anyone would be because, oh, it's a, it's in, one, it's in a tabloid paper, yeah. the way that they heard about it. And it's um, also a myth as well. Exactly, yeah, it's also a myth. So, but after they actually started explaining the real story behind it, the, the Warrens believed, like, they came to realise that actually these strange events are real. Mm. You know, none of these these things are story. These actually happened. Now, they became convinced and after several talks with, with Ramsey, so whilst they were in London investigating, they popped over to Southend a few times and they came to the conclusion that he was possessed by a demon animal spirit. Right, yeah, okay. So an animal yeah, so spirit So it ties again. in, yeah. Now, Bill was convinced by the Warrens to actually go to their church in Connecticut to have an exorcism performed on him. Mm. Um, and at first he was a bit like, I don't really fancy that. You know, yeah. it's it, one, it's all the way in Connecticut. I've got no way of getting there. Seems a bit much, yeah. Yeah, so eventually he does actually go over there. He goes over there in 1989. Um, and uh, his him and his wife head over there and the exorcism is performed by Bishop Robert McKenna. It's not Paul McKenna, but Robert McKenna. But Robert, yeah. Um, <laughs> now, days before the, the exorcism, uh, there was a, a bizarre incident where Bill attempted to choke his wife in his sleep um, and while well, she was sleeping as well. Um, and so that was the first incident that they had when they first got out there and within days that they were going off to, to the church to, for this exorcism. Yeah. Now, in... In attendance, there was Bishop McKenna, the Warrens, uh, Bill, and his wife, um, a paranormal investigator, John Zaffis, and uh, some staff from the people, the the tabloid paper who had actually funded the trip for Bill. Okay. Now, as the exorcism began, Bill was quite sceptical and unimpressed because basically what was happening was the, the bishop was just, in his words, rambling in Latin. And nothing whatsoever was happening. It was just I was just standing there. He was rambling, laughing at me. <laughs> yeah. Nothing, nothing was happening. He just said it was all a mumbo jumbo. Right. But then something strange happened. He that cold, that icy cold, washed over him again, and his demeanour completely changed. And the the people in attendance said he began snarling viciously. And his face contorted, his teeth was bared, his eyes were wild, and his hands curled into talons, and he began thrashing about in a rage. Lorraine Warren would later claim that he even physically changed his characteristics. So, like, his ears became a bit more pointed, his face seemed more feral, yeah. um, his hands claw-like. Um, the bishop said that Bill's appearance had changed. Mm. Um And whilst he was performing the exorcism, Bill lunged at him and was trying to maul him, so trying to bite the bishop. Oh, dear. Um, (laughs) Oh, you got the bell! Where's the bell? (laughs) Ding! (laughs) (laughs) Ah. I forgot the bell! Oh, I've 
have to superimpose oh, the belt. You have to, yeah, you have yeah. to find a soundbite. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> There we go, there it is. <laughs> Can't believe I missed that. Oh, mate, yeah. How did you not? <laughs> That's a new T-shirt idea, isn't it? There you go, yeah. Season two match already, yeah. Yeah, so you're either a, a shave monkey or a raging gorgon biting the bishop. <laughs> Season two match coming soon. For fuck's sake. <laughs> A juvenile, I know, but it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So. <laughs> um. So yes, yeah, the um. Where am I? Sorry. Sorry, that you're was my have, fault. You're gonna have to cut this. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. That's yeah, cool. yeah. <laughs> So once the uh, the, the, the bishop um, he fell backwards, but he he motioned to the uh, the deputies, the off duty deputies that were um, present, mm. just to hold off. You know, yeah. he's, this is part he's, of it, sort fine, of thing. Yeah, you know? um, and he commanded in in Latin that the demon leave at once. Mm. Um, now, as he st- he stood there, Ramsey uh, Bill, he's out of control. He, right. he's, he's still thrashing about, and yeah. he's jumped on him. Now, he's now jumped on the bishop. (laughs) (laughs) And he's seemingly going in to to bite his neck. And then something odd happened. All of a sudden, Bill just suddenly fell to the floor in a heap. Just kind of, uh, and fell to the floor. And there was this one last roar that rattled out of him and he just fell completely still. Just completely still. And Bill would later say what happened. The poison that had been in my body drained from me completely. I was left without any strength at all. And when I turned to look at Nina, that small movement caused me to black out. Wow. He said I gripped the chair as tightly as I could and let the demon continue to be pushed away from from me by the bishop's Latin words. Mm. Um now, apparently, the entire exorcism was caught on film. Oh, right. And I did try looking for it. Yeah. And I couldn't find it. Oh. All I could find was links to where you had to pay for it. Oh, okay. And yeah, yeah. Mm, a bit Always, dubious. Yeah, so exactly, I wasn't yeah. going down that route, no, that's, that's for fair. sure. Yeah. Um, now, Bill would later claim that for the rest of his life after that, he never experienced another episode. Wow. Never okay. experienced another episode. He went on to have a, a, a normal, peaceful life. Um, Ed and Lorraine Warren would later go on to write a whole book about this particular case, and it was titled Werewolf, A True Story of Demonic Possession. Oh, wow, okay. So, I mean, That'd be interesting to, to, them, read. to them, everything was about demonic possession. Yeah, of course and it was, yeah, yeah. After the things that I've read and listen to mm. seems the most likely cause. Yeah, yeah. If Especially in his case. On, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mm. So, I mean, it could be a combination of different things. It could be like a demon possession. It could yeah. be clinical lycanthropy that we spoke yeah. about previously. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there seems to be no physical or mental trauma that he's ever gone through as, as a kid. No. Um, it's quite incredible. Yeah, it's, it's a good one. Interesting one, that, yeah. Yeah. It's definitely more on the, yeah, the psychosis side um, than, you know, an actual physical, you know, transformation or whatever. So, yeah, it kind of, yeah, led off quite nicely from the, the sort of the evidence that, that I found um, earlier. So it synced up quite nicely. And, I, and, yeah, I definitely think in this case it's definitely, um, yeah, a, a, a possession um of sorts, it'd be nice to actually go through the occurrences again, and maybe see if there were any kind of triggers that would, you know, would kind of awaken, you know, whatever it was that was, you know, within it. Was there a trigger? Was there something that kind of, or was it just like completely, mm. you know, random? Because it always seemed to be when he was around people, yeah. people got too close, or, you know, so was it because the demon was trying to use him to just hurt people for the fun of it, and that's what when it you know, kind of, mm. you know, triggered. But, um, yeah, it definitely seems like it was certainly from, you know, sort of the evidence and, you know, the circumstances, it certainly does seem like it was 
you know, demonic possession in, in this instance. I would agree with you, really, because it's like, like exactly like what you say. If there was, if it was a psychological issue, then there would indeed be a trigger. Mm. Um, it'd be a a buzzword, or yeah. it'd be a smell, or a certain sensation, or yeah. or a sight, or, or, or something, something. Yeah, something that would trigger a reaction like mm. that. If there seemingly is no reaction, then. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what, yeah. how 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 could you explain it? I mean, yeah. I'm sort of on. I subscribe to those sort of things that you know, demon possession and, and such yeah. can, can be real, and that there needs yeah. to be more investigation right, seen, into it. That um, I forgot what point I was going to make. Then <laughs> it's gone. That's always good. It's gone. Just, yep, <laughs> just little, gone. Little brain fart, and it's oh, gone. Absolutely. Yeah, I can't remember what point I was going to make. <laughs> give me, give me two Fair weeks. Enough. I might continue. First with two it. weeks, yeah. Then we'll, we'll yeah, we'll, uh, we'll come back to it. But, um, um, but yeah, yeah, I, I, like, I, it, yeah it sort of feeding off from from all of that stuff. Yeah, it, it's not like a you know a transformation. It's not. It doesn't seem like a psychotic episode or you know anything like that because all the MRI scans, all the psychological testing and, and uh, experiments and stuff that you you know whatever else he had done at the uh, you know at the hospital would have identified. That. That. Mm. And if you sat down and, and you know and had interviews with with doctors and whatever, something would have got found as yeah. right trauma for, as a child is is the trigger or uh, you know even silly things like oh, you know you had a bad experience with a dog as a child where yeah, uh, yeah. you know and that's kind of manifested into this or you know something. But the fact that there was none of that and he was actually released from mm. you know police um, holding and and uh, the, the psychological hospital and all these places. You know, especially from you know from that sort of time period, if it, any sort of sniff that he was nuts, and he would have been locked up. Yeah. Um, but the fact that wasn't the case, and I mean, it, could he have just been brainwashed and kind of did he just buy into the Warrens thing? Maybe because of the whole showmanship and you know theatrics of it. You know, just as a possibility. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, there you know there could be that because um, it's very sort of convenient, I think, to say that he was a bit sceptical and it was all a bit, you know, nonsense and all this stuff. Oh, what you mean for like as the cure sort of thing? So yeah, 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 yeah. Their yeah. showmanship of the exorcism Like a placebo sort of type thing, thing that okay, he believed yeah. that it was a cure when actually he was right all along. It was just a load of nonsense. But um, but uh, but otherwise, yeah, actually, you know, he went into like this church and this, this, this guy exercised him and, you know, and ever since it was, um, you know, he was cured. And, and I, I tend to believe it. In terms of how it happened, because he would have had money to make from it, you know, if the tabloids were getting involved, yeah. people like the Warrens were, you know, that could have led to documentary, TV appearances, all this stuff. Oh, absolutely. So if he was in that kind of mindset, he could have made himself, a, you know, a local celebrity and, and kind mm. of benefited from it in in such a way that, yeah, he, he sort of, yeah, yeah, I guess made a bit of a name for himself. Yeah. But the fact that he didn't. <clears throat> by all accounts, aside from, you know, local, you know, articles and whatnot. And he did say that he was cured and nothing ever happened again. And he, you know, he led a, you know, fairly normal, peaceful life or whatever mm. would, would lead me to believe that it, it did work in, in some shape or form, whether it was a cleansing and an exorcism or, or whatever, mm. it, it, it seemed to do what it was meant to do. Well, he seemed respect. to have just fallen off the face of the earth after 1989. Like, yeah. So nothing, yeah, nothing exactly, happened. Yeah. Like there was no follow-ups. There was no, they were, like you say, no going onto TV to talk mm. about the story and the psychological issues that he's had yeah. because of it. And, and you would have carried it on. You would have said, oh, the exorcism didn't work. I've, yeah. I've still got it in me. It must be part of me and it's not a demonic possession, you know. Mm. And then you would have continued to have these episodes and these occurrences it's, and I mean, probably ended up in hospital wars. It's fascinating. You know? It's, it's, a, it's a really good one, yeah. And it, I think it's another example of the, you know, if you believe that the type of werewolf that you can have, and it, and that it is a mm. possession or you know psychological to an extent, but not led from a, you know, a trauma or well, the fact that he's like injured that. people and 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 stuff, and, and there's record uh, of it. Yeah. Eventually, he, you could say, the choking was attempted murder. Yeah. You know, yeah, it, definitely, yeah. Officer, he yeah. was, he was saying, "I've got the devil in me. I'm going to kill you." And yeah, all that's of this. attempted it's, murder. Yeah, he put a, an officer in hospital for you know for four days. He's mm. tried to attack his friends and his mother, and you know, random you know sort of women or, or people. So there's, it was definitely something to it. And it's all been documented. So yeah, it's um, yeah, it's a weird one. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of 
on the fence really with it. I don't I, I don't know if I'm necessarily able to c- come off on wow, a particular okay. side. I mean, if I if I did, obviously, like got to make a decision now, sort of thing. Then I, I would probably say that I'd be on the side of believing, but not the mythological side of things. I'd be more inclined to go down like this route, so yeah. the spiritual, you know, possession. Um, sort of psychological mm. um, kind of aspect where pe- where there is a condition where people do think that they are not necessarily a werewolf, but, in, you know, any sort of dog, they have those kind of animalistic urges and, and rages and, um, and you know, and, and that kind of thing. And also it's, you know, well evidenced, you know, here, and I'm, you know, and I'm sure there are load. Of, I mean, there's loads from, um, you know, the 1500s and, mm. you know, and, and Switzerland and parts of Europe where people were, were tried for display in the same you know, symptoms, you know, these attacks, these, you know, these blind rages, the, you know, the hunger for, you yeah. know, sort of blood and, and flesh. So, yeah, if, if I was to jump off the fence, it, it, then it would be on the belief side, but it'd be, it would be more from the actual spiritual and, you know, mm. kind of demonic, you know, energy side of things, as opposed to like the physical transformation that we yeah. know from mythology. Oh, it's, 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 I guess. it's crazy. It really, I mean, what I'm, the, when I started reading this, I was thinking, like, or at least asking myself, is this a modern berserker? Is this mm. what you you would expect from a berserker from like the the the, the Norse invasions yeah. and and stuff? You know, it, yeah. is this was this like a, quite a common thing mm. in their yeah. in their society that? Yeah. And would he be considered one of them? Yeah, not like from a young age, he'd be like be trained from like to nine be like years that. old. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. In, what is that? What is a mm. berserker? Is it a form of demon possession or, or yeah. a, pos- a spirit possession rather than yeah. a demon? Yeah. Uh, but spirit possession in that it completely changes you, completely changes them, takes you over for that period to sort of um, carry out a purpose. Yeah. And then gives you back to yourself once you're done and you're left thinking, what the hell has just happened? You know? Mm. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's an interesting, I think, uh, I, I think I'm on theory. the same sort of yeah. side as you in that I'm more likely to, to, subscribe to the idea of of, of a spirit possession mm. or a psychological issue yeah um i mean there's there's enough to suggest that psychological issues could in fact be spirit possession yes um you know the 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 ancient knowledge you know you go mm. to um anything any doctor that isn't part of the western culture yeah you know so you go to a third world witch doctor or something mm. like that they instantly go where it's a demon possession or it's a spirit possession yeah. and this is how you get rid of it through this ritual or that yeah, ritual yeah. or you burn this or, or something. Drink that or... Yeah. yeah, they have this under... They have the under... They're under the understanding that the psychological issues that people have, yeah. they experience are down to some sort of spirit attachment. Yeah, it won't always be like clinical in the sense that it can be cured with like modern medicines and... Mm. And I suppose you know, if you believe thing. that there is something more to this than just this physical realm, that there yeah. is a spiritual dimension or something mm. like that that exists outside of what we can physically yeah. experience, yeah, yeah. then it's not that far of a leap to suggest no. that various different psychological issues, such as maybe schizophrenia, where they're hearing yeah. voices, maybe they really are actually hearing voices and they're closer to that... That line, that, that veil, parallel, yeah. That veil is thinner... For, for them, them, yeah. Than it is for people that would be considered neurotypical. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. As you know, that, yeah, that's sort of the that, idea yeah. that I subscribe to. That maybe yeah. we, from a clinical point of view, we need to explore <coughs> other possibilities than just modern the medicine. Nuts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, the nuts and bolts. This is what's wrong with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, at least we've moved on from shock therapy. Yeah, thankfully. You know? Yeah, but yeah, instead. There's a, a load of What's the alternative? opioids. Yeah, exactly. There's the, yeah. the alternative. And yeah, exactly, there's, enough, yeah. there's enough people that are, that subscribe to the same ideas that believe that opioids leave you open mm. to such demon yeah. possessions. Um, there's that film, um, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, in which they do actually explore that idea. Mm. Um, and it was the first that I heard of it. And then all of a sudden it seemed like it's caught on. It's caught yeah. on that sort of idea that yeah. potentially these mind altering drugs yeah. leave you open. Yeah. Yeah, make you more susceptible or whatever. Yeah. No, I can yeah. get on board with that. Yeah. That's certainly the, the sort of the same side that I'm more likely to, you know, lean towards out of out of all of it. Yeah, yeah definitely. 
especially with everything else that we've looked at over the course of this podcast. Indeed, yeah. That seems to be the more likely, I'd say. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's our episode, guys. That is. So thank yeah. you very much for listening as far as you have. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks Getting for bearing with. The, the yeah. waffling bollocks that we've been going on for the past two hours. <laughs> well, in two years. Yeah, yeah two years. Yeah, yeah. At least 18 months now. So. Yeah. yeah, so thank you very much for, mm. uh, for tuning you. in and listening. Yeah. And uh, in closing... Um, uh, got a big shout out to our Patreon, so thank you, yeah. Justin and James. Yeah, um, thank you. Unfortunately, uh, James, uh, Justin, you will notice that the camera has stopped recording. <laughs> it might have done. Yeah, I don't know. It was um, just a screen. I think it might be the case that the, the the batteries turned off. Um, the batteries yeah, de- depleted. Maybe it's not plugged in, but, is it? But yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's no big deal. Technical issues, yeah. Technical issues. <laughs> yeah. Um, us being the issues. <laughs> Quite yeah. likely we didn't. That being technical in. and us being the issue, yeah. <laughs> As always. <laughs> so, yeah, the, uh, I'll make sure next time that he's plugged in. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, so um, thank you guys for, for tuning in. And, uh, guys, you can uh, subscribe. You can. And uh, you can head over to Patreon. Search for Scripted Ramblers Podcast. You can. And you can sign up to one of two tiers that we've got yeah. available. Please do. Another way is you can like and subscribe and share things on our socials. So we're on YouTube, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Yeah. We're on Instagram as well. All the same handle. Yeah. All the same so handle. So easy to find. Nice yeah. and easy for you guys. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, head over to the merch store. Yes. Pick yourself yeah. up a shaved monkey or a raging gorgon. <laughs> yeah. Please do. <laughs> I'm going to continue with that joke because that's brilliant. And, yeah. and uh, you know, watch this space for uh, biting the bishop. <laughs> God, yeah. It's a theme. It's it a is theme a theme, here, yeah. But in the meantime, guys, it's uh, goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. And remember, sometimes the things in our heads are far worse than anything we could put into books and films. Yeah.